Welcome to Land the House, I'm Seth. Today I'm working with the Jinmitsu L8. This is a 20 watt diode laser capable of cutting and engraving wood. Also plastics and other things, but I'm gonna be sticking with wood here in this video. Now I was thinking, is it necessary to have a business in order to get one of these lasers? I don't think so. I'm gonna be using this one here for some household projects to show you some ideas of what you could use this for. So if you're interested in that, then continue watching. Before I jump into the first project, let's do an overview of this machine. First of all, it's got a three inch exit pipe for fume extraction. And for now, I'm just sticking this out my window. Uh, in the future, I will have this connected up to a, a better exhaust system. But for now, that should do just fine. Uh, as you can see back here, it's got a fan that will suck the fumes out and push it out the window. So here at the front, I can open up the lid and this will allow me to access the inside. Now the lid as, or everything on here, as you can see, is an orange color and that's gonna allow the laser light to be stopped. So you don't have to wear safety goggles whenever working with this laser because it is all built into the case or the frame. So it's so nice. You just pull this out of the box and it is good to go. The packaging of this machine was fantastic. Everything was uh, very well stabilized and there was zero damage whatsoever in transit. So on the lid, there is a little button right here and that's a safety switch. The laser will not move or operate as long as the lid is up. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you want to go over to your computer and click move and your laser won't do that. So you have to close the lid and that will get it going. Now there is a camera up here, which will show the work surface of the laser and allow you to uh, position your material just right, which is so nice to have. The limit switches are built into this part right here. There's one right here and over here, and that will uh, allow this unit to home or go to home whenever you uh, either start the machine or tell it to go to home, which is very nice. This is the 20 watt module. The uh, L8 can also have a 40 watt and you would just change out right here and make that pretty good. Uh, there's a thumb screw over here that allows you to move this up and down and also a little adjustment here which you can measure your material with. So that's a very nice guide to have. You don't have to carry around a separate guide for that. So this does have the uh, X and Y direction. So you can see here it'll move and then it'll go back up this way. Cable management is fantastic. I've had zero issues with all of that. And down here is where your air assist goes as well. And it is out of the way. So nice to see that. Uh, so it does have air assist that comes with this laser. And that is this little box here. It'll pull air in these holes and then push it out this tube. And that will shoot out into the, the work surface and uh, take that fumes away, which is really good. It also has a cutting base, which locks into position and it does not move at all. There are various guides along here that will keep this from moving about. So good to see that. And like I said before, it does have uh, the closure, the enclosure around every side. So you can't see the laser anywhere, no matter where you look. Now, as far as the inputs and controls here on the front, it's got the air pump right there, the power for the air pump. It's got the power to the laser itself, connection to the computer for the laser, connection to the computer for the camera. Over here, you can adjust the air. So the, um, the blower will go from uh, low setting to high setting with that. This is a play button, especially works with uh, mobile devices. I've not tried that out yet. Power button for the entire laser emergency stop you just push that turns off everything this is a fault alarm which is pretty handy to have and then here is a lock so if you want to lock this machine down so nobody can use it that's where you'll use it right there simple power cord goes down to an ac to dc adapter and that is the basics of this machine so now that we've seen the overview let's go ahead and start working on a project for my first home project, I built a coat rack several years ago, but sadly I did not put anything on the end of the dowels, and so coats are constantly slipping off. So I thought, why not build a little disc that I could screw into the end of that, and that would allow me to then have something to hold on to my coats. 
So I've got some Baltic birch plywood, quarter inch, and I thought that would be perfect to cut out those little circles and uh, have that attached to the end of my coat rack. So that's our first project here. Let's go ahead and get this thing underway. I'm gonna take my Baltic birch plywood and just set this in here, and I'll be able to use my laser here in a moment to find the perimeter of my cut. I'm using a program called Lightburn to make this file. This is a paid program, but it is the best in the industry, so highly recommend that you use this. A license is about $60. I'll go over here to the circle tool, and I'm going to draw a circle. If I hold down the shift key, it will make a perfect circle. And then I can go in here and find, let's change this to inches. I can go up here to the inch and do 1.5, push enter, and then go down here and push 1.5, enter. And that will give me the size circle that I am looking for. And I want to also do another circle inside of this. So let me do just a little one right here. And let's see, this does not need to be very big. Uh, so let's do something around 0.25. Okay, I've now put that in the very center of my bigger circle, and that's going to give me a place that I can put a screw in in order to hold this into my coat rack dowel. Now, just for the fun of it, let's make one of these, and then we can come back in a moment and uh, make the others, just to make sure that this is the correct size. In order to set this up, I've got everything on the black layer right here. And so I can go ahead and go over here to layers. And I can see this one is currently set to fill. I want that to be a line, but I can actually double click on this and bring up some more settings. Let's do a speed of five and a power of 80 and then do two passes and see how that does. It may be too much. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Now I want to be able to spin this adjustment knob here and get the height. So I'm gonna have to loosen up my thumb screw just a bit. And then I can spin this, well, lift the whole laser up a little bit, spin this around, and let that touch down. And then I can lock this back and then spin it again. And that is the height I need to be focused. Now that I have the depth set for focus, let's go ahead and close the top. I'm gonna turn the laser on here by pushing the power button. Oftentimes it will automatically go to home. Let's see if it happens this time. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the air assist here. Once the air assist is on, the green light shows up here on the laser to show that it is active, which is a good thing. Now, my exhaust automatically turns on, so that's good. It has been connected over here. So if I go ahead and press the frame button, we should see the laser move. All right, I had not connected yet to the computer, so there we go. It has now gone to the home position. Now I'm gonna manually move this back to where I want it. Now if I press the frame button here on the computer, There we go. It's now gonna draw that out. We should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and press the start button. And it has begun to cut. You can see the smoke going out here. It is being sucked over to the exhaust fan. Now, because I have my exhaust going out the window, I'm going to open up a door to let some air through here. The air will come in this way and be sucked out the window. And the job is done. Let's see if that was enough to get through that quarter inch plywood. Little struggle right there at the end, but I think we'll manage. There we go. I can just knock that little burr off right there. Very nice. Let's go up to the house real quick and see how well that's gonna do on that rack. After holding my sample up to my coat rack, I think I'm gonna remove the middle circle. I can just glue this in place and it'll be just fine. And I think I'm gonna drop the size down by just a little bit. I'm gonna select that middle circle, delete that, select the big part of the circle, and I'm just gonna drop this down to 1.4, and then once again here, 
1.4 and that just drops the size down a little bit. I'm gonna keep the same speed cutting setting. Now that I've adjusted the size and removed that middle circle, I'm going to right click here and duplicate and then I can move this over so I can have two of those. And I'm just gonna do a total of 10. Now that I have all 10 of these ready to cut out, let's go ahead and frame this up and begin the work. I think it's gonna actually go slightly off over here, so I may have to adjust this a little bit more. That job just finished up. Let's move this to the side. See if those fall through. Almost all of them did. There we go. Nice. I like that a lot better. You can see I uh, did get too close to the edge, so I had to cut uh, two more over here. Uh, but that's gonna be a nice little addition to that coat rack. So we will do a little sanding on these, put a little bit of that, uh, I guess I used linseed oil, and we will get that done in just a moment so there's one project mostly finished time to move on to the next project for the next project i want to make little organization tags so whether you've got a workshop or a kitchen or if you're doing a sewing room whatever you want to have organized it's nice to have little name tags to show you what things are of course you can do that with paper but for me i'm going to be using this baltic birch eight inch plywood so let's go ahead and uh, cut pieces out and also engrave on here what each bin is going to contain. So let's get this set into the laser and head back over to Lightburn and get our design real quick. What I want to do is grab the rectangle tool here and just draw a rectangle. I'm gonna do two inches in this direction and one inch in this direction. And I also want to make a little bit of decoration here. So I've got my one inch by two inch and I want to add a little bit of a bevel to the edges. So I'm gonna get my tool down here and let's just click and see what we can do. That might be a little bit too much. So let's change this to something more like 0.2 and see what that does for us here. Yeah, it looks better. So I'm gonna click on each of these edges and just give that a little bit of a radius. Very nice. So let's see, yeah, looks pretty good. All right, so inside of this, I want to use my text tool. I've got this right here. I'm just gonna click there. And let's call this first one half inch. And down below, let's say union. So I've got a PVC union that I want to organize. And let's go ahead and uh, drop this text down to fit inside. Whoops, don't wanna click everything. There we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, there we go, half inch union. Looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and click the two of these and we should be able to center this. Very good, very good. All right, so first of all, I want to separate these to different layers. So I'm gonna click onto the words and push this over here to the blue layer. So now if I were to go into the first layer here, I've got uh, these settings. Now, because I'm using eighth inch instead of the quarter, I can go down to just one pass, should be fine. And then if I go over here to uh, this, instead of being a cut, I'm gonna go ahead and call this a fill. And so I can uh, drop these settings down significantly. Let's try 180 and a power of only 50. Let's just see what that, what that does. 
All right, let's set up our material and do a test. All right, the job is done. Let's see how it looks. Cut out very smooth. Mm, definitely says half inch union on there. I think that's gonna look quite nice. So I'm gonna put some 3M tape on the back so it will fit up on my storage unit and show exactly what's in there. The stack of name tags seem to turn out very nice. I will have to get some of the sticky tape to put on these so we can put them on the storage shelves. And uh, everything popped out of here very smooth. There was uh, two of them, I think, right here. So there must have been some kind of uh, issue with the wood, but uh, the laser did fantastic with a single pass on that eighth inch right there. I now have all 10 of my little discs cut out and I have wiped off the edges to make sure there's no more soot on them. The goal here is to put these onto my coat rack, as you can see. I'm just going to uh, dab a little bit of this wood glue onto the dowel and then center this. I'm gonna put uh, some weight on it for a couple of hours and this should be good to go. And that will help to hold on any coats that I put up here and they should not be falling off. All right, and then after that, we will use our uh, little tags that were cut for organizing my PVC parts. My board's gonna cover up to this one right here for now, so we'll start putting some of this wood glue on here. Should not take much to get this to stay in place. That's probably sufficient right there. I do want to come back later and make sure that I put the same stain on here to match everything. As you can see, I keep a supply of PVC parts here in my shop, and that's where I was cutting all these little tags for. I also got some of these double-sided sticky tapes and that's what I'm going to use to attach this here to each one of these compartments so I'll know which one of these is going to be stocked with that component. So let's go ahead and put a couple of these up here so I can organize my shelves. I think this looks great. Having these tags here on each of these components is going to help both me and anybody else that has to restock these components. I'm gonna go ahead and fill out everything else here that I have cut from the laser and it will help me organize all this stuff. So very nice, a project that you can easily use this laser for. I've been using the Jinmitsu L8 20 watt laser now for two or three weeks. I've done a few projects on it and I am thoroughly pleased with the way this machine works. I've used multiple other machines in the past and this one just perfect right out of the box. The laser module was able to fit into the frame no problem. The air assist is all built in. There's no fumbling with extra power cables because it's all built in here and it's just nice. I even had to use the emergency stop one time just to try it out, and that also worked just like it should. So if you want to learn some more information on the Jinmitsu L8, then please check out the link in the description down below. Now, like I said, I think this is a great laser for a hobby person who wants to do things around the house, but also it has practicality in a small business as well, whether it's for engraving or cutting wood. I think it will have a great place in your small business. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth with Land of House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.